As Greece circled the Euro financial bowl and its people watched their savings vanish, Americans felt safe, snug, and secure that nothing like that could happen here. Two words, Puerto Rico. And here are a few more words. 72 billion in debt equal to 100% of the nation's gross national product. Or to put it into more perspective, more than five times the debt ratio of California or Texas. The ride on America has got a lot bumpier, kids. Uh, no one has a better economic think tank than we do. Veteran economist and author of The American Dream Under Fire, Steve Beeman. The veteran economist, professor of business at the University of Maryland, and national columnist, Peter Morisi. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Peter, let's begin with you. I look at those numbers, and that is astounding. And this is Puerto Rico, technically the 51st state in America. This has got to have some sort of a repercussion here in America, yes? Well, it'll give people some pause about Illinois. It should affect the bond market that way. But it is largely a very separate place. It's a very undeveloped place. It's very much a Latin American country. And uh, the big problem that Puerto Rico has is its people have passports. Excuse me, they can come to the United States. They're citizens. They don't need a passport. So the island is emptying out as the debt burden grows. Uh, and there's really no political impetus to bail them out, say, as was the case with New York City, because in no way is Puerto Rico vi vital. It, it's just not. It doesn't produce anything we need. It doesn't produce anything we want. Basically, all it really gives us is immigrants. How about this, Steve? Here's a quote from Desmond Latchman, a former IMF division chief now at the American Enterprise Institute. He says, if the hedge funds press for their pound of flesh, they could drive the economy into the ground. That sounds disastrous, but is it really? Well, it is for Puerto Rico, but as Peter accurately said, the biggest risk in Puerto Rico is the immigration that we're going to get from there. The unemployment rate is staggering in Puerto Rico with this debt problem they've got. And so as these funds try to recapture any amount of the money they're owed, it will continue to put that death spiral into the Puerto Rican economy, and they're not anywhere near getting out of that anytime soon. End result. Okay, so then perhaps here in America we shouldn't worry that much, Steve. Would you say that that's fair to say? Yeah, I wouldn't worry. I think it's another one of these things that you and I've talked about so often that puts a little more fear and trepidation into the markets. To Peter's point, it's like Illinois. I mean, you've got all these little parts, you know, bobbing up everywhere that are problematic. Be nice to see some good things happening for once. Peter, let me get to you in a column you wrote that recently appeared on Newsmax entitled, What Establishment Candidates Must Accomplish in the GOP Debate. Of course, everybody's pointing here. So in your opinion, give me the one or two things that they've got to accomplish they have to get across other than just rhetoric. They have to, they have to let Americans know that they have an agenda to address their economic pain. All of this talk about inequality and gender and so forth comes back to one thing. If the economy were growing at 4% instead of 2 these issues would not be nearly so prescient or that they wouldn't be so compelling. Uh, they each have to explain how they're going to get the economy growing. Lacking that, Donald Trump wins the day uh, because he says, these people don't know what they're doing. I ran a business. I'm smarter than they are. They'd be billionaires instead of politicians if they were me. They've got to dispel that with substantive suggestions. You know, Romney gave people those prescriptions last time, but they wanted more of Obama. One thing that is clear from the polls, they don't want any more of Obama, and they don't want Jeb Bush's older brother back in the form of the same old Republican establishment. So, Steve, let me point to you then. When Peter talks about the agenda, and he's right, we're basically talking about issues here that the American people can listen to and they can understand and they can actually have some faith they're going to get done. Do you agree that Donald Trump has the best shot there? And then who would be your second choice amongst all the other also ran, Steve? I think the only other one that can even hold a candle to him is going to be a Rand Paul who comes in with a radical agenda to change things. I, I think, to Peter's point, the American population is sick and tired of the royalty we've had in the Clintons and the Bushes. They're looking for something new. Trump gives us that with a look to the economy that hasn't been seen, but Rand Paul does as well. It's why I think you're seeing so much push on Bernie Sanders. It's out of the box. It's different. Right. He's dead wrong, but at least it's different. But how long would it take, Peter, to change things? Uh, this is one of the great questions. i got about 60 seconds left. You get a new president in line. You still have Congress. you got the House. you got so much. How long would it really take for substantive change the American people can see? For, for Jeb Bush, forever. He is still his brother's little brother. Uh, what about Perry from Texas? He had a lot of success. But you have to be willing to do radical things like Romney wanted to do, to do something about the Chinese currency so you get rid of the trade deficit, to develop offshore oil. 
Americans may now be ready for that. They may have now had enough poverty, but they also have to champion Americans. They have to go after the cable companies, the airlines, the drug companies, all of which have become abusive monopolies. As people's incomes have gone down, the cable people, the drug people, the health insurance people, the airlines have gotten fatter and fatter. They remind me of French aristocrats just before the guillotine came down. And you know something? It's time they got the blade. Uh, <laughs> I just love the idea and just the visual itself. Uh, Ten seconds, Steve. What are we talking about here? Four or five years to make things better? I think at least. we got a lot of structural things we have to dig out of, so whoever gets that position in the Oval Office has a long way to go. Leave it to us to bring the guillotine into things, because it is perfect indeed. Well done, gentlemen. Peter Morisi, Steve Beeman, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk again next week. Stay with us, everybody. The Fastest 60 Minutes in News continues.